warm up too with a little watercolor too. So we'll just we'll just you know what I'd like you to do instead of drawing me circles, draw me egg shapes. Since that's the theme of the day, the head is an egg. I should meet everybody, huh? I don't think everybody is. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah. So just draw a whole bunch of eggs. to just kind of build up to them, build up to them, slowly, slowly. They're a little, so in other words, a little more pointy here and a little wider through here. some um, straights so you don't always have to just nail it on the first try sometimes it's a little more accurate if you just build up to a line Some nice rhythmic curves as well. And oftentimes with those two, I'll, I'll just. Can you explain what you're doing? Because I don't understand. Um, <clears throat> I'm just warming up right now. Yeah, we're we're going to do abstract heads today. <laughs> No, I'm just warming up, and these egg shapes are just, you know, I usually do circles, but I think we're going to be doing a lot of egg shapes today, so that's, that's all. And these are just warm-ups, that's all. Just warming up. Just to kind of clear out the cobwebs. Um, and then what else? Um, also, just any color you like. Let's do some straights and some curves. Um, straights. I love these big old Chinese brushes. They hold so much paint. And then they, look at that, they get to this, look at this tip. I can, I can get. Really fine lines. But flatten out the tip a little bit there. So that's fun. And just some. curves as well. And this gets you right away into the paint, into drawing. I like to clear that up right away. Because sometimes, you know, you're an hour into it and you haven't even touched the paint yet. We 
could even lay down some tones, any 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 color you like. You could do some like a, like a gradation from dark to light. Maybe something darker at the top. Add water. And if I want a little bit darker, just fade that into my dark part there. And just stretch it out with water. Oh, whoops, sorry. I thought it was there we go. So some gradations, some lines, straight lines, curve lines. You know, I remember when I used to run track, gosh, we used to stretch out quite a bit. And then I would do, I mean, I was a, a long distance runner and I would do a, uh, I'd do the mile, the 800 meters and the two mile all in one, in one uh, meet. And I would do like a two mile warm up just to, just to kind of loosen my muscles up. Isn't that crazy? Imagine. No wonder I, I was only like 145 pounds or something. What's your best time for a mile? And I ran uh, around 430. Can you believe that? Really? Yeah, I mean, it was a good mile, but believe, and it was a, and I was, you know, written up on all the local papers and all this, but, but the truth is we had so much competition around there. There was some someone around that run that ran in high school ran uh like a 411 huh. which, so i was just run of the mill <laughs> yeah. but that's actually a pretty good time for high school um, i mean i could have probably uh worked out some kind of scholarship or something but well i remember I, when the the four minute mile was broken who broke it yeah jim that. ryan did I, jim ryan build do that in the 60s I forget who broke yeah. it. Yeah. He was my idol. I wanted to be just like him. Because yeah. I had broken a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of local records and even in junior high school but I don't know. Roger was gonna do. Bannister. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I he was a great one. I thought he did it. He might have been the first one that did it, you're right. Yeah, maybe I quite forgot more. Yeah. No. You probably weren't. I used to do a lot of research on the topic. I was really, really into it. I mean, I, I would go out in these fields near Lake Paris, way out there, and I, and there was nobody out there. There was just fields. And I would run for just, oh my gosh, I did these 10-mile runs. Crazy. I mean, it was only in the ninth grade. Uh, you know, you have so much energy. But I really wanted to, that's what I, that was my thing. I really wanted to do that, but I don't know. Art. Yeah, my, my coach did not like that I liked art either. <laughs> okay, so what I'd like you to do here is let's just go over some, some good, basic, I call them the academics just the rules. So let's throw down three eggs. Just, just slowly build 
build up to it. A little wider here, a little more tapered at the chin. Hopefully you can see that. I'll try to that a little bit darker. I was thinking about doing this in pen and ink. You get all these dark little mistake marks all over it. Okay, now I want you to guess. Just, just take a guess about where the center is, somewhere in there. Pretty close to the center. And then just connect those. And we could just call this, all right, the eye line. After you've done that, Go ahead and split it in half this way too. Just to know where the center is. I mean on the front one it makes a lot of a lot of difference, but on the other ones they're just sort of a guideline. So that's the first thing I do when I'm laying out any head. I don't draw three heads, but the first thing I do is um, I, I lay out the, this cross section. Uh, why don't you just write I, I front, and we'll call this the uh, the three quarter view, and then the side. I've done this um, what I like to do is take a guess about how high your eyebrows are that's a guess okay let's just take that across to if you want to do my little method of putting these little eye these that's fine too that helps just looking for a So just remember, you might want to write that down to the brow. You could just put up there is a guess. It's uh, arbit. Well, it's not arbitrary. It's. Uh... So Rob, when you say the eyes are in the middle, you mean the eyeballs? Yeah, you could put. Why don't we put that eyeballs? Or eye socket, maybe. Um, well, the socket goes in between the brow, the brow, the, the eye socket starts at the top of the brow, then it kind of comes down to the eye level, so we'll, we'll, I'll show you that in a second here. I just call it the eye, because it goes right through your pupils. Maybe I should call it the pupil line. <laughs> yeah, generally speaking, not everybody fits these perfectly, just so you know. But I lay them out that way, and then I I, I suit them toward the perfect, uh, toward the perfect, toward the person. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, what I'd like you to do is from the brow to the bottom. Okay. Strike a halfway point. Not from the eye to the bottom. Okay. Make sure you're doing it from the brow to the bottom. That's what you're looking for right there. That little halfway point. Now what you can do here is just write it in parentheses. And that gives you the bottom of the nose. And we 
we could just take that line straight across. Actually, this is the three quarter view now. From the nose to the chin is the bottom of the mouth. Approximately, approximately there. Just take your best guess. It'll look a little bit low. Remember, it's not the split in between your lips. It's the very bottom of your bottom lip. So actually, I set all three views up the same in the beginning. Now, uh, oh yeah, now, um, with the, yeah, let's do this. With the three-quarter view, three-quarter view means you're seeing, uh, one quarter over here and three quarters over here, you know, whichever way the person's looking. So, so I, I, I find out where the center is and then I come over about a quarter. And that's where I want my center to be, right there. Okay, so we'll just put that there. We're just moving that over. There's your lips and eyes and brow. We're just moving. If you want to erase that too, you can. Might be better. The three quarter view would be probably the hardest one. So why don't we just erase that out just to keep it. Rob, how did you get the uh, vertical line again? I just, okay, here's the center, right? Yeah. And here's the side, right? So I, I struck around halfway in between. Okay. Because look, if I, if I put another one over here, see? We have one, two, three, four quarters. Uh -huh. So what I'm saying is that we have the three quarter view means you have three quarters from here to here and one quarter from there to there. Right. Now, there's, there's a little, it does get a little bit trickier than this in the second here. What was that? It's, I see it's a straight line down. We don't follow the curve. It's not like a. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. The, those faces, you, you got to know a couple of things to do that. It, it, it gets kind of funky. So, if you go around the face, it can get kind of funky. I, I know. Uh, I have problems teaching that technique. So, but it, it, technically, you're right. It, it does follow. It, it, it does follow the shape of the head. But I'll, I'll show you. It's better this way. Rob. Well, yeah. Well, how about the ears? Uh, well, let me let me put on the features after we've laid out the the head first. Oh, I just wondered where where they go in the lineup. Yeah, we, well, oh, oh, you're right, you're right. You know, I didn't put them in there. You're right, I'm sorry. Why don't we put the ears over here, because this is all kind of crowded over here. Right. The ears reside in between, let's just block them in like there. Between the eyes and? And the nose. And the right. nose. Eyes and, eyes and the nose. Somewhere in between the eyes and the nose, or the brow and the nose, I'm sorry, the brow and the nose. Yeah. Now we're still on this three-quarter view here. Um, what happens in the three-quarter view is if you grab the back of your head, you have a cranium back there. So what we need to do here is add a little bit of, a little bit more cranium back here, like this. And then we may have to take off, we're probably gonna have to take off some of this. Because you know when you when somebody turns at that weird angle, you lose part of their face over here, and you add a little bit more over here. So I, that's why I say this is the one you want to practice the most. And we're not actually going to paint that today, but I just want you to know this because you know I want to drive you crazy. 
That's my job. No, um, yeah, that, that's how I lay out the three-quarter view. The three-quarter view is probably the most... I would say if you get good at this one, the other two are a snap. Now, having done this all, let's go over to the side view. Um, to get the cranium of the side view, now, you've probably seen some people have a flat head in the back, some people have a really round head in the back. It, there isn't one way to do it, but what some people do is they take this egg right here and they actually turn it sideways. I think it gives you an awfully large cranium in the back, but, but um, if you don't give enough cranium in the back, sometimes it looks like you're, like you're, like you just got out of the pool or something, or, or maybe, uh, I don't know, looks a little flat back there. So, what you can do here is just, see how I drew, a, see how I drew another egg in there? About like that. So it's basically like I took this egg and turned it on its side. Now, it might not be that big, but it's a good way to find your egg, your, uh, your cranium. Yeah, and still the, the eyes, the brow is gonna be there, the nose, and the bottom of the mouth. Actually, the uh, side view would be the easiest, usually. Okay. Now let's get into the shapes um, of the face. And so, how about we throw a, a little triangle here on the nose like this and try to get it about, about the same width on both sides. I mean, not everybody has a the same nose, obviously. In fact, the truth is, if in portraiture, um, it's it's so important to get that nose right. <clears throat> okay, I, a uh, triangle for the nose. Now let's. Oh yeah, you notice how I brought it all the way up to the brow, right? All the way. You can feel your nose goes all the way up there. Okay, now on, on the three-quarter, we're going to take this about like this. See how small that is from there to there? I'll show you why in a minute. And then the nose from the side, here's the brow. Believe it or not, I take it all the way out here. I know this looks weird. You'll see why in a minute. Okay. Then let's, from the eye to the brow, just draw yourself, see this shape right here? Look, it looks like a W, see? I just drew a W on there. Draw that W. side of the nose and the three quarter are you going to do that later because you can see some of the other side right of the nose or not so what other what do you mean um yeah we'll, we'll do it later we'll, we'll, we'll do it later okay. uh, if you'll notice the the three quarter the three quarters always let's just write this down it's a combination Hopefully you can see this. A combination of of, of the front and the side. Let me just write this down here. Let me divide that up a little bit. Of the front and side. So, it looks a little bit like the side, but not that much. And it looks a little bit like the front, but not that frontal. So, so it's, 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 it's tricky. Okay, and then around about here, and this is just a guess, but around about there, 
that's I just lay them in like squares. I know they're rounder, but this gives you the side, the top, and the side, you know, really. And here's the thing about a three-quarter view. We're going to do this W again, but watch. You see how this part of the W gets kind of squished. And then we have this middle part here. So we got to come way over here. And then this part leans a little bit more because we see a lot more of this side of the face and everything over here is really squished. So, so the, the eye socket about there, this one's way, you did a lot more eye socket over here like that. And then this one, not as much and it actually come might come in a little bit like that so it's foreshortened it's you're seeing much less of it and much more of this and then the eye socket from the side is just that that's all it is By the way, these are just averages. So some people's nose comes way off over here, and some people's nose is really small, you know, and flat. So some people have square noses, some people have rounder noses. So just so you know, I mean, all of these are these are just averages. Okay, and then, but by the way, uh, I use these shapes on everyone's face. It doesn't matter who it is. I always use these shapes on everyone's face. And then, and then I um, break it down. But I, you got to frame it out first. Okay. So what we're gonna make here for the mouth is a diamond shape like this. And how wide do you make that diamond? But you take a guess. But. Generally, the corners of the mouth are right under the pupils. So, we'll, so I'm not quite there yet. I could, probably could, could have made that a little further. We'll see. Sometimes I'll have to stretch them out a little bit more. Now, you're going to notice this about it. If you haven't done this and really analyzed this on people, you'll notice. You'll look at the corners of their mouth and you'll go, wow, those are really small. That doesn't even come close to, or some people are really wide. So anyway, these are just averages, and then you suit it toward the person. But so you get the diamond, okay? I just call that diamond. And then over here, same thing, but just like this, you get much less diamond on this side. See, watch. Only that much. Can you believe it? Only that much diamond over there, over here, um, like that much. Try to get them straight across from each other. So, you know, sometimes it helps to draw a little cross through there first. I should have done that. It helps you to get the corners of the mouth right. Looks like a kite. <laughs> Rob, Put a little tail on it. No, yeah. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm looking at your front view and even the three quarter views, and they look like they're smiling slightly. Now oh. I, mine. Yeah, that, that's my trademark. That's my trademark right there. No. Because mine look like they're surprised, like, oh my gosh, something like that. So well, now if it looks surprised, maybe the mouth is open a little bit. But but I'll tell you what, uh, the corners of the mouth, you, you might want to make a note of this. Uh, corners of the mouth are the second most emotional thing on the whole body. So right, just a little shift like this. You know, it starts looking happy. Or a little shift like this. And it starts looking a little melancholy or something, you know. Uh, uh, 
So that's a character thing, and I, I leave that alone for now, usually. Even though you will, you will get uh, an emotion there. So, yeah, so well, if I tilted it up a little bit, it'll probably look like you're smiling. What's the first most emotional part of the vase? Uh, the fingers. I'm just joking. When you put your finger in your eye? No, I'm just... No, the, uh, the eyes. Yeah. Eyes are the most emotional thing. Okay. And then, um, from the side, the lips... I kind of wanted to... Hmm, well, why, why don't we just do this? Um, it's, a uh, it's... You don't get the diamond shape as much. It's, it's more like this. And if you draw this a little bit of an angle, because typically people will be, the up, upper lip will overlap the bottom lip. But now I have, you know, my daughter used to have an underbite. And um, so we, we would look at all the famous people out there that have underbites. And there's all, all these famous people and supermodels and everything that have underbites. And so it's not wrong or anything. It's just... But most people, I think, have an overbite. Or maybe I should just draw it straight. I don't know. I was taught that way, so. <clears throat> so you notice how I brought it over this line a little bit. See how I brought it over the line a little bit? Um, I'll, I'll show you why here in a second. And actually, maybe I should have made that a little bit smaller because it should come right up. Maybe not right under the pupil, but something like that, yeah. So those are how I sort of draw my features. Then I place an eyeball in there. And you know what might help you with the eyeball is, and let's do this first. Uh, measure about where you want your, your tear duct to be, right? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, not the tear duct, the... Uh, inside of the tear duct. This is this is this can get kind of tricky. And then I'll I'll guess okay about that's about how wide I want my eye, that's about how high I want my eye. Kind of around in there. So I give it a top. Even though they're circles, I still you could even put them in boxes if you like. <clears throat> I've never done that, but I should probably try that. We're almost doing that here. So I'm just giving myself how low it is, how high it is, because a lot of that's behind the bone up there. And then just go ahead and fill in yourself a, an eyeball. Now you may have heard that the, uh, the uh, head is about five eyes wide. Well there, it doesn't mean it's five eyeballs wide. Usually, I, I think, I, I don't think it means that anyway. It means it's the eye. So if you take, like for instance, right here, it's, it's a little more than one of these eyes, right? If you put an eye in here and an eye over here, you're gonna come up short. Um, <clears throat> wait, what it didn't account for is you got a tear duct that comes to here and a tear duct that comes to here, you know, so. And you've got the corners of the eyes that come out here. So if you add that up, and you're you're about five eyes wide. I made that one a little far over. Okay, so <clears throat> go. You know, if you put yourself a little pupil in there like that. I mean, this will look like a robot when you're done. Um, see how it comes down to about the uh, corner of the eye, corner of the mouth? Rob? Yeah. How important is it, or not important, to make the two eyeballs exactly the same? Because normally, are they absolutely the same or slightly not? They're pretty close. Oh. 
Yeah, they're pretty close. I just I just use this to place the eye. That's all this is for right here. This is for placement. I I, I we're not even the uh, the characteristics are what makes the person's eye look like them, and it's the way it catches the light and all that. So, um, it, it's you'll you'll notice there are differences. So. Uh, I just paint what I see. And I, I really try to notice those differences. Okay. Now, now some people are, have really wide cheekbones. Some people, you have to cut them off here a little bit. You have to cut some of their face off here a little bit because they're a little more narrow. So we'll, we'll talk about that. And, um, So then we, you know, you just give them a little ear cut. You cut into their ears a little bit. So this is generally how I lay in the head with no characteristics. I mean, I will give them another ear. <laughs> you deserve it. Here, have another ear, Fred. Okay. That, that's sort of, oh yeah, here's another, I'm sorry. There's one more thing I want to give you right here. I like to tell myself where are the sides of the head and where are the front of the head, okay? And so what I do is, if you if you can put your finger on your cheekbone, the highest part of your cheekbone, that's what the dot I'm making here. And I make another dot right on the corner of the eye, the eye socket. It's already done for you. It's right there. Okay. And then come over here, make, give yourself that, that little peak. And then if you go down to your chin, if you'll notice you have a front to your chin and a side to your chin, so you can feel that little peak right to your chin. And so I put a point about there and a point about there. And so what happens is if we connect those, and I usually pull this right through about the corner of the mouth, something like that. That tells me where the front of the face is and where the side of the face is. Really important. Because when you put a light source on somebody, it'll start turning around here. There's a lot of other reasons too. So the front of the head is here and then it starts going to the side of the head and it drops off, right? That's around here. So I just put a little line right there and a line right there. I didn't put these eyeballs in there, did I? Oh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, sorry. And then you know what I do is I, I just take this all the way back to the ear like this, like that. And I, I take this one down that line and then back to the ear like that. Just like that. And that gives you the top of the cheekbone. So see how it looks like, like a C-3PO or something like that or Iron Man or whatever. Just like a, like a humanoid robot character thing okay and I like to let myself know those when I draw people I will put those in okay let's I'm gonna put another ball here And I'm thinking I, I should probably come over a little wider. It's hard to guess. They say your eyes are about as wide. As, smaller than a ping pong ball, uh, but bigger than a quarter, maybe like a 50 cent piece.
So the, the again, the pupil it should be right below. So I'm a little white on my uh, corner. And then on this side, it's a little tricky because the eyeball goes right behind the nose. You know what? Yeah, right behind the nose there like that. So you might wanna just draw the whole ball. They get closer together because it's a three quarter view. And now you got a, a ball that's behind some bone and stuff. So I draw up like that, and then I come back and erase that part out. And you know, the pupil will be approximately, approximately right under, right above the corner of the mouth there. <clears throat> and here's what might surprise you is that the eyeball on the side is farther back than you might think. Now I, I give all this nose right here because I that gives me a lot to cut into. So not everybody's like that, but I have seen people just like that. <clears throat> I just like to give myself a big wedge and then I can cut into it any way I like. Yeah? So the eyeball is a sphere, and so are we when we're looking at it from the side and the three three quarters, are we seeing the full sphere, or is that, or we're just drawing it in and then it partially gets obscured by, by the socket? I mean, do you, I, I guess I'd have to look at people to see that if you're seeing the full sphere. Because it's, it's a sphere. Yeah. Are you, you, which, which one are you talking about? The side. No, I'm talking about either the, the three quarters or the side, the side um, do. Um, that, that, that if you're looking at it, it's like, okay, so I'm trying to picture, you're seeing the yeah. eyeball of the spear. Yeah. And it cut your eyelid on top and bottom. Yeah. Right? I, I know it's weird, right? I know, I, I, I think it, I want you to understand that you're drawing, when you're drawing an eye, you're drawing a ball. It's a sphere. It's not flat. It's a sphere. So. I have to keep that in mind when I'm drawing. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, thanks. Definitely, that's a great, great thing. Now, have you, you know those little lines, those little uh, lines here on your face? These kind of smile lines? I don't know what they're called. Well, if you could draw kind of a, like, almost like a little, like that around there. That's your muzzle. And uh, just like, I mean, you can really see it on the chimp, but, but people, it's a lot harder to see it. Now, when people, like a lot of athletes too, they'll, they'll lose so much body fat, they, they, it really, it can really stick out. So, um. Uh, um, I just, I want to, I want you to notice that because I'll show you why here. Let's do it here too. This one would come way out over here. And then not so much on the other side, just way out over there. So it, it really kind of, we just draw it right through where the top of the chin is, right where the top of the chin starts. That's the thing to know here. And I'll show you why we need to know that here in a second. From the side, it'll start like that. But then it just goes right to the top of your lips like that. Like that. <clears throat> And then, you know, your chin isn't back here. Your chin's way out here. So you have to, what I do is I throw the muzzle out there. I come in and then I give myself the chin like that. I 
Except, yeah, that, that's good. That's good. We'll just do it like that and bring it right up into there. That's fine. Here it's a little more tricky. We, we still want to come in and then around here is where the chin starts. When it comes in, chin starts and then goes back around for the face. And this, just bring that back there like that. So as you can see, the, I did put the ear on there, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, and also the top of the cheeks on the three quarter oh. view. And yeah, I didn't do that here either. I didn't do that. Yeah, on this one, it'll kind of go like this. So it just, just evaporates right into all that, like that. On this one, cheeks way out here, and you're going to go like that. Is that cheekbone? Then the ear would be from the nose to the brow, somewhere in there. So it'll overlap the skull. I'll just leave it in there. You won't see because this is the side right here. This is this. A three-quarter view won't see. You, you usually won't see any. I have seen it where you actually see this part of this person's skull. It's unusual, and you look at it and you go, "Oh, I know why that's unusual." <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now the uh, where this comes up, and here's the thing about the ear: the ear will lay. It's not straight up and down. It leans back a little bit. See, like that. Make sure you give it that lean. I'm going to draw a picture. I mean, a, a, a picture. I'm going to draw a line through that just to tell you about that lean. Because you may have drawn somebody's face before, and you'll draw the, the ear straight up and down. And it, it looks funny. Like, what's going on here? I don't understand. Rob, in the profile, how did you figure out where to place the ear? Where, where the jaw meets the bottom of the nose, right there. Okay. Okay. Right there. Yeah. Okay, so that's the muzzle. Interesting, huh? Now, I told you I was gonna have you draw, I mean, let's steady character, right? And yeah, that is a little, little large here, isn't it? And I, I said something about studying character of people, but before we get into the character, we need to throw out this framework, okay? Let's just call this what it is. The frame work. And you notice that in my landscape class too, right? I'll, I'll have all these little frameworks, the steel yard and the, and the tunnel and all. It's a framework. Ours have been doing it for centuries. Okay. Now, let me, yeah, um, let's divide this page into four, four slots here, like so, one, two, no, like, one, two, <laughs> Maybe I can give myself a little bit more over here.
Just try to give yourself a eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. And then we'll get into drawing drawing on our portrait. Because we are going to paint. <laughs> I know it's a painting class. Okay. Um, you know what? I didn't think about doing this. Um, so, you know, your eyes. I guess you don't have to write this. Will we paint on this sheet of paper or? No. No. Uh, this, this is just copy paper. Your sketchbook will be fine. So let's draw a <clears throat> why don't we draw the front? And the side. And we could we could give ourselves more room than this. We're only gonna do three. side three quarter So the front view of an eye, let me get this on here square, front view of the eye. Uh, you might think I'm going to draw this big graceful curve or something like that first. Nope. I know most of you have had my class before, so you know what I'm going to do. Um, draw me out a trapezoid shape like that. I want you to make a little note here that says that uh, like up here is the high part, down there is the low part. So in other words, what most people do is they'll do this, they'll, they'll make a diamond. And the, they don't really know they're doing it, but they'll put the, the top right above and it doesn't usually work. I mean, I've seen some obscure views of the eye where it gets pretty close to that. so. But this will give you that Egyptian eye. And if you're drawing more of a natural eye, see, all you have to do once you've done this is just round off the corners like that. See, it gives you that beautiful, graceful eye shape. And Rob, is that, um, are, are, are all those sides parallel to each other? So, I mean, well, par yeah. is it parallelogram? Okay, it's hard to tell. Yeah, them. I think you're right, parallelogram. That's what, that's the... Oh, I don't know the names. Sorry. Something pretty close to that. And do I always draw them the same? No, they're they're not always absolutely perfect. But this is what I want you to think about. These are the things I want you to think about. You've got you've got this shape, and of course, many people's eye will do very different things. But now we have this sort of graceful shape. Most of the time, it's a good idea to draw your iris. Um, all the way through all the way through like that and then just come back and erase it all the way through that would give you more of a round shape than if you try to if you try to just kind of like hook it and sometimes when I'm just sketching real quick I'll just do that but it usually hardly ever works <laughs> All right, then, like right around. I mean, you can take a guess how how much because it's it's different on everybody. But how where does the tear duct start? Kind of goes about right in there. And and then the person.
person's tear duct. I would just go with the shape sort of like that. I mean, everybody's tear duct is different, so something like that. Usually there's a, um, a crease somewhere. As you know, as we get older, that crease slips down and you can't see it anymore. <laughs> but uh, some people you can see, I, I've seen people that have three creases. Three creases. So we just put a, put a crease there. To... I've noticed I, I've completely lost mine. Um, and then the you have a thickness to the bottom lid and it goes like this it gets you can see it the most right here and then it thins out as this kind of comes up and it'll thin out and it gets level so you don't see as much here but that's look for the thickness it's a big deal that thickness is a big deal because it takes it, uh, it, it catches light. It'll catch a highlight. And because, you know, you have a round surface here, this is all skin that's wrapping around the surface. This will step down. You know, it, it goes around and, and it kind of goes back into the head there. And that's what creates this other little, a smaller little lid right there. The bottom lid is much smaller and only does about 20 maybe 15 percent of the moving um yeah if you look at yourself when you blink or when you when you have an emotion it does it it, it actually does play into it the emotion no question but uh the upper lid does most of the movement And then, you know, how much pupils in the eyes, uh, depending on how light the person's eye is. So I just draw another circle in there. Um, Rob, could I yeah. ask you to go over that little line that's connecting that lower bottom lid to the upper bottom? The next one over a little bit, that little uh, vertical line. Oh, this? Yeah. Oh, all I'm telling, all I'm, all I'm saying, this is just a hypothetical line. It, all it does is I'm telling you that this surface is flat this way and then it comes down and then it comes around the face. Oh, okay. So, Great. so yeah. Um, yeah, you know, oftentimes I'll have you guys map out surfaces. So I'll come back and say, okay, this comes in and it tucks in and it comes out and it tucks in and it goes around the surface here and it comes out and then, and then. Like the contour line. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's without drawing every little map line on there, which, which can get, uh, which is a lot of fun actually, but a, a little off topic. Okay, so then, and then your highlight. Remember on a highlight, you, it's usually not perfectly square. Usually it's a rounder like this. It, in other words, it follows the, the shape of the eye like that. It'll, it's not square, it's not like a, I wouldn't put it like a square. Now, sometimes they're round because you have a, um, a round light flashing at them. Um, but often, yeah. Next to your pupil, between your pupil and your uh, uh, tear duct uh, corner, what's that line there? The, the, the this? The next, next to it on the left. left. Oh, this? Yeah, what is that line? Oh, I'm sorry. That was, you know, I'm, I'm going to take those out. I was just mapping out the contour of the, uh, of the, uh, Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's a little confusing. Sorry. I can take these both out here. I'm, I'm, I don't want to spend too much time on this. What have we got? We're only at 10 o'clock. It's important. Yeah, I was throwing in those like little. You know, I learned that at art.
conference that they're studying under. I don't know if you've ever heard of Bern Hogarth. Or the, he has all those books out, Dynamic Anatomy, Dynamic This and That. He's really famous. Well, he was really famous. Um, um, but he would always do that, and I got in the habit of doing that. I mean, there we go. So that that's – these are the things that, that – this – this pull from the high part over here to the lobe over there. Look for, you know, the thickness of this. All kinds of things. Um, the lids, you know, this does a little less. Okay, let's get going here. The side view, usually the easiest. I start off with a shape like this. And here's the thing is that the top part is ahead of the bottom part. So don't make it like this to where they're straight up above each other. I want them like this. So the bottom lip is, be, I'm sorry, the, the bottom lid is behind the top lid. So this overlaps that. Oh, I guess we could just draw the whole eyeball, the eyeball. Why don't we just draw the front part since we're drawing it so large here? But you see how it kind of does that? We could just round that off. And from the side, it's pretty flat. You may get some curvature, but it's more like that. And then you have this thickness of the lid. So your, you know, your eyelashes don't start here. Your eyelashes start way off over here. You have a thickness of the lid that it goes in front of the eye, and that's what casts a little bit of a shadow over the top of the eye. It's really important because if you leave out that shadow, the eyes don't look like they're in the head. So what we can do here is with our little ellipse, we could just kind of like go like that. So there's the thickness of that. That's, that's the lid wrapping around the eye and going back over the other side. And you might see that here too, just out and a little bit over. You can see that the lower lid, the ball of the, the the ball of the eye slides back into the head there. So you get the lower lid going about to there, and then it stops and it creases in. And then here's where you, this is your your cheek area. I'll just leave that in there. <clears throat> and the thing about uh, <laughs> your eye from the side, uh, now, I mean, technically, if you really want to get into this, the it's not actually a perfect circle. Now, it, it's very rare that you would draw an eye this close up, but it, you may have known that your eye actually does something like this. You have that cornea on there like that. So that rarely comes into play when we're drawing and painting somebody. <clears throat> but sometimes it does, so I'll just let you know it's there. And it's really a, in front of the um, iris. And the iris... Is an ellipse, and we could just draw that ellipse all the way through if you like. That might help you. Draw that all the way through, and then 
Just chop it off at the top. It'll give you a more perfect ellipse. I'm sure we've drawn that down a little further. Here, you know what? Here's what I'll do. I'm pretty sure you'd know it was a side view. <laughs> um, then you have this top lid that comes out to about here. And I'm just going to draw a really generic lid right there because like lids can do many, many different things. Just so you know that there's a lid there, that's all you need. <clears throat> like if you look at Rubens, Rubens will put these big giant eyes on people with, like they'll have like one, two, maybe three little lids back there. It's weird. And I've seen them, uh, who is, some actors have that. You know, on these Dutch type of people, You'll see those giant eyes, and you're like, whoa. Must he was just drawing what he saw. There's even a good portrait of him and his wife where they both have these ginormous eyes. So Rob, maybe this is kind of subtle, but it looks like both those lines for that top lid almost have a curvature to them, so they're kind of following the, um, the yeah. eyeball. Yeah, they do. Everything goes around the ball of the eye. I mean, because this one's kind of a flat side view, you don't get too much curvature, but you will. I mean, you, I will take take it around the eye. More of an illustration there. And then you have a, um, possibly a pupil in there. Sometimes you can't see the pupil, and that's, you know, I mean, <clears throat> just depends on the person's eye. But I want you to realize that these are ellipses. So, so remember when you're drawing an ellipse, the, 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 the part furthest away from you will be subtly flatter, and the part coming at you will be a little bit rounder. So a little bit flatter on this side. Because an eye, you know, you're not looking at very much distance from here to here, but you do want to make it a little bit rounder. So I could have even rounded that off a little bit more. Who wouldn't believe it? It really makes a difference. Okay. And then let's do the three quarter. Well, we, we got a lot to do here. The three quarter is a combination of both of these. So let's start it off like this, but let's squish it. <laughs> So I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to start that down a little further because I want to give myself enough room. And then it's more like this. It, it's the same idea as the front, but it's a lot like the side. So you know, it's a three-quarter view. It's weird. So I lay it in, I just, I take what I did on the front, which was this, and I squish it. So it's more violent, it, this, this, uh, this curve right here is more, it's not quite as graceful, it's just whew, like that. And then this one, Rob, did you say if this is the eye closest to you or farthest away from you? This is the three-quarter view. Oh, um, I mean, it could be either one, but I guess, I guess this would be the one closest to you, yeah. This would be the light closest to you, yeah. It would have to be, yeah. Those are going to be different, aren't they? Or not? Uh, yeah, they, well, yeah. If I was looking at this... I mean, this on the other side, there you'd have a nose involved, and it would go like that. And then the cheekbone, and so it actually fits way back there. 
And that's, I mean, I'm just going to show you one three quarter view. So it's the largest die. Yeah, it's it's the one. It would be the one closest to you. You're right. Yeah. So then you catch a little bit of the inside of this one. I mean, both of them are worth doing. And you feel the eye. When I threw that in, can you see all these wrap around the ball of the eye? See how it wraps around? I really throw that thickness of the eye quite thick. That's just my habit. Because doing portraits so long, I, I just... I just want to notice things. And there's that little slit sleeve or whatever you want to call it, the crease. This one over here. And then they come into a tear duct shape right there. This is the inside of your inner lid right there. And it slips right into the tear duct kind of like this. I mean, it is a strange angle. You're, you really want to spend some time looking at people and getting some good, good analysis. And so mostly what I'm showing you here is the things to look for. I think I want to make that thickness a little bit wider. Now, I made that thickness way too wide. I tend to do that because, um, I don't know, I, my portrait painting teacher taught me that, and I never forgot it. <laughs> Let's do it like, about like that. And, I, and it does a more graceful thing than this, but I really want you to be aware that there's a thickness to that. So <clears throat> then you have this lower lid. And then and by the way, some, some people's pupils go behind both lids. I've seen people where you, you they actually even normally you can see their whole iris. That's it's just odd. They look surprised. <clears throat> Rob, is the axis of that of that ellipse there? Is that vertical, straight vertical, or is it tilted a little bit? Straight vertical. Okay. It's almost right. straight vertical. Okay. Thank you. You know, I mean, that'll change depending on if the person's looking more at you or if the person's looking over. You know, this would be sort of forward, just sort of looking forward. Right. So. You know, you, you could just draw the whole thing like a, like a big target. You know? And then, and just come back and erase out the top. I mean, you might think that's the hard way. But then you'll you'll go in and do it the other way, and you'll mess it up, and then you have to and you mess it up again, and then you'll mess it up again, and then you go, oh, maybe maybe that was the best way. easier in this just to you know <clears throat> um, I'll show you quickly on the eyebrows from a front view let's just let's just do it I'll just do a pathetical eye here Go from to 
kicked in. And if you start it off in a little framework like that, instead of going right for every little hair follicle, you'll have a lot more good luck. A lot more luck. How's that? A lot more luck on um, your eye. But they just tend to go from thick to thin, and they arc like that. Those are just tendencies. Everybody's eyes are... I hardly even have any eyebrows. <laughs> Mine might have always been blonde, so you couldn't see them, but I used to have a lot more hair there. Now I'm losing them. Whatever, you know. Um, but just look for those tendencies from thick to thin. Eyelashes will tend to go... Here, I'll do this. I'll draw right here. Uh, the eyelashes over here will point in that direction. Now as the eyelash faces you, because remember you're on a bulbous surface, right? So as the, as the lash faces you, it'll point more straight and straight, and then it starts going this way and this way and this way, see? Of course, I'm drawing pretty long eyelashes, so it'll look like a woman's eye or fake eyelashes. But that's the direction of them. And then I don't draw uh, individual eyelashes either. What I do is I, I get the shape, like let's let's take the top of this right here, like that, right? That's this. And what I do is I, I just look at the person's eye and I throw it in, in a shape like that. And then I just kind of, when I put in my strokes, I think the, I, I think in these terms like that. And I get that, you know, that sort of shape. I, I'll put them in a frame and then I'll do that first. And it usually comes out better. Okay. Ears. Let's get on this because I want to get on this painting. Ears. Think of the letter C or maybe, how about this? Maybe an E like this. How about an E? A C or an E right in there? No, that's the side view, isn't it? <laughs> I was thinking of the side as the front. Um, Yeah. Sorry. You can just keep yours there if you want. I'll put the side view here. The side view is the most illustrative. If you'll notice, most of the time, you don't really see the whole ear. And ears can do many different things. As you can see, my drawing here is a lot more fat are wide than this. So it's, we could call it a C or an E, why don't we just call it a C? A C, and then go inside and put another C like this. C plus C. And then you get that little dip in your, like a little canal. So let's just dip that down there like that and pull it up. That could go really deep. Everybody's ears are different. And then you have this other little piece of cartilage that goes on the front there, like that. I don't know what that shape is. Some people block it in like a square. I think that might be good. Like kind of a square shape. Whatever helps you. And then this little piece in the middle really throws people. I want you to think of 
uh, a Y shape in there. Like a, like a Y, it'll go like this. It'll go like this. Kind of a Y shape like this. And the way we'll do that, you know, you could just throw it in like that slightly. Throw it in like that lightly, okay? Go like this. There's your sort of light, your light Y that just kind of goes like that. Maybe, maybe out a little further, like that. And then a little darker, draw yourself a loop in here like this, a loop. That's on the inside of these two. And then on the outside of this, this sort of guideline here, on the outside, draw yourself this. And then just let it go into nothing. And the outside of all this, we'll just draw another one like this. And we have, don't forget the little uh, earlobe. Everybody's earlobe's different. So, CCY plus a lobe, and you got all this canal stuff in there. Yeah, from the front, your ears, I, you know, if you throw them in a box first like this, You notice that's how I did my little robot man. And then let's say the face is here. I tend to like to do this. Arch this like that. <clears throat> and then I take this part way out there and then I hook it in. And then I attach that little lobe on the bottom. It'll look kind of Spock-like here. Until we smooth it off. I like Spock's ears, though. He's got cool ears. Occasionally, I'll see someone with Spock ears, and I think, that's cool. Pointy. Okay. So they do, they'll come back like this. If you, you know, if you, if you learn the Spock ear, you'll really learn the shape because we can always smooth that off. I just want you to know it kind of peaks and rolls and out. See, this part that pops out here is actually this. I'm really exaggerating it, but hey, you know. Now, we've got this front piece right here. And I'm going to put that right here. And it comes way out, down, hooks in for that little, that little canal in there. <clears throat> I mean, the ears are a lot of observation. And for something that you really don't see that much. Now, if you've got a side view of somebody with their hair pulled back and you really want to do a good ear, I would spend some time with this. But most of the time, it's, it's, it's not the most important thing on the face. Okay, now we're going to do this Y shape here again. <clears throat> but it's really a different view. There's that little hook. I like to always throw that in there. And that just tells you that there's a little hollow space in there. It's hollow. And then what I just drew there, and it just gets lost, it just evaporates right into nothing, into the canal. That's this line here. But you know, drawing it from the front is kind of oblique and then the back part you might not even see this back part of the ear 
this may come out overlapping that. It really depends on the person's ear, but we'll just throw a little something in there like that. Yeah. And then if you don't want it so spock like you could you could, you could just round this off. But I don't know if that would be very logical, sir. I don't have that deep of a voice to pull that off. <clears throat> okay. The three-quarter view is a combination of these two. So <clears throat> you got kind of a side view and you got kind of a front view. I guess I don't have to write it on each one, do I? Okay. Uh, so, yeah. It's a lot like this, and it's a lot like this. So let's just... Kind of a... See? You can see the shape, the, the C shape. Right there. I tend to like to see it. It'll wrap in right, right back into the, uh, attached to the head right there. <clears throat> and then this part gets squished. And there's that front piece of cartilage there. And then the thing to know is this Y shape here. So throw sort of a three quarter view. Okay. For the nose, I want you to. You know, how about this first? Draw me a straight line right down the middle of the nose. And then determine how wide you want your nose to be. We'll just do it that way. I think this might be better. Just to start it off, that way you get a nice equal on both sides. Noses can be, you know, they're mostly cartilage, just like the ears, so they can do all kinds of things. Now, once you have that shape, let's uh, give it a bottom. So, determine about how wide, about how wide you want your nose to be. Make this and this the same, equal from this. And then, and there's the bottom of your nose. I'm starting it off like a wedge. And just take these straight up. And so you have a, a bottom, a side, and a top. And you know, if you look at some people, maybe even in your own nose, you can actually see the split going right down the middle. Might not be really apparent, but you might see a little bit in there. It's really interesting to observe these things. You know, we don't take a close enough look at all this stuff in our own. So there's the framework. What you can do here on the bottom is um, just determine like how wide, you know that, you have that thing that comes down the, <laughs> that separates your nostrils, that piece of skin right there. I don't, I mean that piece of cartilage, I don't know what that's called. I put it in, filtrum. though. Is that the filtrum? You mean the one, be be oh, I'm sorry, between your nose and your mouth? No, that, you know the, um, oh, here, that I'm in between, oh, sorry. I don't Isn't know. that the yeah. septum, the septum? Septum. Okay, maybe that's what it is. Okay. The um, is that is between your the nose and your mouth, your lip. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's that that interesting part in here. Yeah, that's the filtrum. Okay. 
okay. So we can leave we can leave that out. But um, I want you to go for a shape like this with the nostrils, like this. And as we know, nostrils can do many different things. Some people just have little slits there. Some people have big, giant. You know, it, it just depends. So I just go with like a teardrop shape, like this. And I just put a teardrop shape like that in there, and a teardrop shape like that in there, and I call it call it a day. But of course, you're, you're going to want to study the different kinds of noses, all kinds of noses out there. And then from there, you might want to come up. You have these wings of the nostril. Just, just, just put them in like this. Something like that. And they'll kind of hook back up and under like that. Now, since your cartilage in your nose can do many different things, uh, I'll just go over the, the basic things, and that's that. Uh, if you go up to the very top of your nose and pinch it, you, you can feel that there's a little bit of a pinch right here. It might be a really big pinch, I don't know. So just notice that there's a pinch. And then it expands. Something like that. And then you get a little bit of a pinch here again. So Rob, on that top pinch, does that flatten out right there at the top of the nose? It's like, okay, so you're at one angle and I'm feeling my nose here. And then you kind of, is, it, is there a little flat spot before it like goes into the rest of your forehead? Uh, no, no, there isn't. I, I, I think you need to go see a doctor right away. No, I'm just joking. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there could be. Yeah, you know, everybody's nose is different. Um, I've seen some people where the skull right here really overlaps the nose, and you get a really deep, deep line right there. I mean, there's all kinds of things happen. So, but it just ne it usually gets narrower here, and then wider, and then narrower again. And believe me, I've seen many people where there's none of that. It's just straight. So, it, but these are things to look for. And then the end of the nose can do so many different things, I, you know, you could have a ball on the end. You could be really kind of tapered and like a little more straight on the end like that, a little kind of, uh, I've seen people that are really square, quite square on the end. So it just depends on your nose. So, but generally the, you know, here's the wing of your nostril, right? It just rolls under. So you'll go into shadow right around here. So that little guideline that we put in there in the beginning is, is, is pretty close. And those are the things to look for. Uh, from the side, remember how I just laid it in like this? And you're going, what? I know, it's kind of weird. But I throw it in like that, and I, I have seen people where they almost go all the way down, like, wow, you're just going, wow. Like around the Mediterranean, you'll get people with really long, pointy noses, but they're hard, they're not very, like here, if you look at them this way, they're not very wide at all. It's just interesting. Then I've seen other people that are really wide, and and then you look at them from the side, and they are almost flat. So, okay, so... Um, what I like to do here is just chop off the end like that. That's my next step. And if you, if you like, you could just put in a kind of a, a lip just to give it some context. Not necessary. Uh, the nostril from here will tend to, you know, you could use almost the same shape, pretty close. 
And that, again, could be very different on many, many different people. There's that wing part, and it just kind of tucks up under, under there. And then for the nose here, it will tend to go in for that pinch and then expand and then in again and then out. And believe me, you know, the end of that nose could do many different things, probably rounder, etc., and come in. But just look for that. You, you may, you know, I've, I've seen people that come in like this and then go way out and then come in and then go way down. You know, I mean, it's and you don't even see the nostril. So just look for these little little things. And if you notice how far the uh, nose sticks out off the lips. Um, now, by the way, I've seen people where their lips actually come out further than the nose. So, uh, but you'll get a cast shadow. This will, this will create a shadow over all this oftentimes it, when you're outside. So it's just because it comes off the face so much. Now, from the three quarter view of this, um, I just throw it in like this. I usually like to include part of the eye socket like that. Just throw it in like that. Maybe the other side, uh, the other socket over there. You know, let me draw this a little larger. Sorry. You can stay with your drawing. I'll just, I'll draw this a little larger. Or is this one over here? So you can see how it kind of fits on the face. A little more three-quarter view. Again, um, chop off the end a little bit. And let's give a, let's, you know, I wouldn't want it this wide, but let's give it some width to that. Let's give a little bit of a, a top plane. <clears throat> and now where we chopped it off here, we're going to add some more over here, but it won't be at the same angle. Remember when we did this, when we did the, uh, when we laid in our face and we got that little W going there and this, this one leans way more over this way. Same with this one. This one comes way more over that way. So you get a lot more on this side. And there's the bottom. And then the side. Now obviously there's no line there. There's actually no lines on the nose at all, but we use lines to, to distinguish planes. So we have a top, a side, and a bottom. I'll take those little lines up there if they confuse you. Let me lighten these lines up a little bit more. Because I'm going to draw on the nostrils. Now the nostril from this side, okay. Actually, maybe a little further over than that. not even see any nostril on this side but if you do it'll be like this really small this one's really large because this one's coming at you and that one's going away from you that's what you need to know and then that wing of the nostril You'll get a whole lot of wing over here. That sounds funny. And then very little wing over here. Just enough to frame it up a little bit. Yeah, I got a little fat on the bottom there. Robert, there's any sex 
differences in any of these for men and women for ears and eyes and nose mouth for sure but well women tend to have a, 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 a smaller less a smoother smaller nose than a man I mean like if you were to you know this works in all uh, all races and everything so, um, but the, you know on a this is more of a man's nose where you'll get more of this too. So it, it just depends. That like, for instance, if you were to look at your your brother or something like that, you, you would see that he'd probably have a bigger nose than you and smaller lips. Women will tend to have bigger lips. Uh, women will tend to have bigger eyes. Um, women tend to have a more less bone structure, like big bones around their eye sockets and those type of things i mean like this, this eye right here will tend to look more feminine because i made the eyelashes longer so women will tend to have longer eyelashes that's not i have seen men with really long eyelashes though so it's more like a, if you were to look at somebody really close to you or maybe your brother or sister you probably find those those common characteristics you know more more muscular, bigger, and more angular um, uh, bone structure. So for the lips, let's draw a cross. And then the diamond. too when you're doing a three-quarter view boy this this really can help you um, okay now we're gonna draw an M okay so we've already got this part of the M let's just draw like this part like this there's the M and then we have a more slanted M here plus M more slanted so more like this. I like to pull this over this part a little bit. See how I did that? That's just my little thing. Maybe I shouldn't do that right now. I should just keep it M, M, and then the bottom one's a W. And it's usually a loop on people. You know, most people are this, kind of a loop. But the reason I include the W is because some people bevel up like this. So... And then don't don't forget the uh, the corners of the mouth are a big deal. I call it the tuck. So from here on out, you just want to round things off. You can round off this part. round off this and the reason they bulb out like that is because you have fat deposits like in here and in here the top is even more complicated you basically get little fat deposits in here 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 Not weird looking, <laughs> but if you look at it, I mean, some people that have a lot of fat in their lips, you can really see these, and you'll you'll see quite a little scoop right here, and then it bulbs out again, and then it pinches for the corner. So, really interesting. Okay, side view of the lips. Um, 
Remember when I drew this shape for the eye? Whoops. This kind of shape for the eye? Well, believe it or not, the lips do a lot of the same thing. Watch out, we, we can throw this one in just the same shape. Well, the top lip usually overlaps the bottom lip, usually. So it's very much the same shape as this. <coughs> Excuse me. So the, the, the side view would be the easier one. Sometimes I like to include that fill, fill trim or whatever you call it. Um, and what you could do is just draw yourself a straight line through the center, like that, just to give yourself a guideline. And then pull that down. See how this goes at more of that angle? But then the bottom one, goes more of that angle. So the bottom one faces upward, mostly. And the top one faces downward, mostly. So the top one's usually mostly in shadow, and the bottom one's catches quite a bit of light, depending on the angle of the, of the light. So remember we did this uh, MMW thing. So you're just gonna get a half of a <clears throat> A half of an M, what would you, I guess an N. <laughs> no, I just pull this up a little bit like that. And then I just take it to the corner like that. See, I let that overlap it a little bit, see that? Makes it feel like the fat right here is in front of this. And then remember, remember the tuck. And the corners of the, you know, this could do many different things. Certainly could. I've seen people get really skinny and then bulb way out, you know. It, it, it could do that. So it, it really, really depends on the person. We'll just keep it something like that. Same with the bottom. Uh, is, there a, is there an M for the top of the lip for the side view? You wouldn't, you, you probably wouldn't see this come down. You could, though. It's not a perfect side view, but... You might see this come down and go up on, on the other side. Um, like that. And it gets to, into the more three-quarter view, which we're going to go over now. I'll just keep it like that for the side. The thing to know, though, is that these planes are going downward, 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 downward. And these are coming outward, outward, outward. So these, kept, these catch the light generally. Now, with a really full lip, you might catch a lot on the top. And it, and if the light's down low, you might catch a lot on the top. But generally, this goes down into shade. Because usually the light's from the top. Not always. I mean... Rob? Yeah. Um, I forgot. I have another class to take right now, but I'll be back in about an hour and a half. Oh, that, that's fine. In an hour, an hour, let's say an hour and a half. Uh, we're, you know, we're taking an hour off for lunch. That's so, from uh, 12 to 1? Yeah, 12 to 1. So then what okay. I'm going to do, do, everybody, is I'm going to make this available to you. I'm going to, um, I could have you download it. You know what I could do? How about this? Well, no, I have to get rid of it. Let's, let's all down. I don't, you know, sometimes these big files like this, um, We'll take, no, no, I can't do it, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, why don't we try to download it at lunch? I don't know if it'll be ready by 12, let's hope. I mean, by, by one. I don't know if it'll be ready by one. But uh, I hope it is, and I'll just have you download it, and then I'll delete it, and I'll do another recording, and then we'll download the next one after class. And if that doesn't, if everybody doesn't get it, I'll put the other one up there too. I think I can do it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's odd. So sure. let's do the MMW here again. Let, let's let's start off with a cross. So we're gonna see much less on this side, much more on this side. Okay. 
And then let's take from the top. Let's just go to here. So we don't have that much on that side. And that much on that side. So it looks like a kite, right? And just all you need to remember when you're drawing a three-quarter view is everything over here is squished. <laughs> I should have drawn that squishier. So let's take our M. This M over here is a lot less and this one's a lot more. See how I did that? I leaned this one more toward us, so we're getting a lot more from here to here than we are from here to here. There's your M. <clears throat> this one's much more slanted, but you get a lot more M over here. And then just take it. throw the W in there just just to uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just do this watch I'll loop the bottom and that's you know you see a lot of people like this but then occasionally you'll see some people that kind of bevel up here in the bottom like that so I'll I'll I like to let let you know that lips do that and that's not a deformity or or it might be I don't know you know, I, I've heard that dimples and uh, cleft are deforming. They're like, oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize I was deformed. Shoot. <laughs> I even got that, too. I got a little bit of this thing, too. So, Rob, on the top M, your right-hand side point is a little higher than your left-hand side um, intersection between that and Yeah. And so is that, is, is that because the mouth is a little tilted up or is that because I'm trying to figure out I, I think it's it I'm throwing I'm you know I, I'm throwing a little bit of perspective in there like like for instance these are okay all right gotcha okay thanks. I I probably exaggerated that a little bit more but what you can do is just round this off here round that off you will get a little bit of perspective in there I'm so used to doing it though I uh I might have exaggerated a little bit. What, me exaggerate? I never exaggerate. You do this stuff so naturally that um, that it's like, okay, so even if I think I'm following exactly what you do, it just doesn't always look like what you're doing. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, there's, there's a lot to it. You want to draw these over and over and over. I have just sketchbooks full, full of these things. And then what's really great is, you, you know, you've got these sort of hypotheticals right up here, and then you start looking at it in people's portraits, and you'll notice, wow, whoa, they're very different, and they still look great, you know? I mean, nothing wrong with the way they look. It's just that the, their variation to the, to the sort of academic rule is, um, like, you know, like I said earlier, the, the corners of people's mouth might be really wide. And, like, I, I've seen it on... Um, you know, on these, these beautiful uh, uh, supermodel types and stuff. Um, and it, you can look, you know, you can have a really small mouth where, where the corner of the mouth is way in here and still look great. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with beauty. It has it just, uh, there's the average and then there's, you know, so it's nice to know what the average is and it's nice to know what the structure is. And then you can look at people and compare. And that that's all these are because my gosh, we could spend all day on just the front of people's noses. Okay. Um, we don't have a whole lot of time here. Let's. But, but this has been a great review, Bob, Rob. Yeah. Yes. 
Absolutely. It's more important. It is yes. more important. Very good. Let's get some paper out here. I just have to choose my battles. What's what's going to be the most important thing? And let's look at. Uh, what kind of paper, Rob? This I'm is just doing watercolor paper. paper. Watercolor. We're going to paint. Water. We're going to paint. Okay. Let's okay. go to paint. Yeah. Good paper. Yeah, good paper. Now, it's so hard to decide between him and her. Whoops. Is it... Her. <laughs> um, do her? Could we do one in the morning, one, the other one in the afternoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have more time in the afternoon, too. So, you know, maybe we could work on, maybe we could finish it up. Because she's great, too. Gosh. Um, any preferences? <laughs> I, that's what I say when I can't make up my mind. <laughs> okay. Is there a difference in difficulty between the two? Not really. Okay. Sometimes you're just used to, you know, doing... Uh, let, let's do him. Let's do him. Okay. Now, here's the thing to know about him right away. He's a long thin head up here a little bit further I need to I wish I could get this a little bit more of an angle here my my monitor won't behave okay well okay so and he's leaning a little bit to I mean I'm, I'm to the left maybe his right but I just mean yeah, there's an angle there. So as I throw this in, as I throw this picture in, I'm thinking an egg shape that is leaning a little bit to the left. Now, Rob, your, your um, paper is landscape instead of portrait. So yeah, no, if I, if I do it portrait, I'm going to... Um, I if I do this portrait, I could do that portrait, huh? It just doesn't fit on the whole page. <laughs> I think it's okay. I'll do mine a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so I start off with a long, a longer egg. I'm going to taper it a little bit here. That's leaning to the left and <clears throat> whoops um, there we go and it's not it's not no I've, I've got mine a little bit too much to the left okay fine I should look at them before I do it. <laughs> okay. Pretty long face. So he's probably a tall person. Okay. And then what you can do is just draw yourself a line. Think, think through the center of his face just to give you that angle. And then, let's draw an eye uh, right through this. Now this might help you through get, get the, uh, through the center. If you draw a, kind of a box around his head like this, And I still might be a little too much there. I'll, go, I'll angle it a little bit more like that. But it, sometimes it can help if you kind of box it in like that. I, I kind of box everything in, so. And then so you, you have an egg on top of a cylinder, right? You, the, um, yeah, he's not that 
Right in there somewhere. Okay. Got kind of a short neck. But look how high his shoulders are compared to his neck. So this one's... I'm mean, sorry, compared to his chin. If his chin's here, the neck, the shoulders are way up there. How about that? And that's a, there's another giveaway there is that you can see more neck on this side. I mean, that's because he's leaning a little bit. And then from his chin to about here, I just take a guess. That's where his shirt is. So I just kind of... And why do I... I mean, you're like, why don't you do that later? Why don't you get right into the features? Because now I don't have to think about this. It's there. It's pretty well done. I put him... I, I get, didn't give very much room down here because... Um, I want to, I, I think he's got a lot of hair on the top. So let's take it. Now look how high his eyebrows while wow, they're way up there. I'm going to give him plenty of space for the eyebrows. And here's another thing. It's not a three quarter view. We're almost looking straight at him, but we're not quite looking straight at him because you can't see the ear on this side. You can see the ear on this side, right? So there's another thing that's giving it away. So what we're gonna have to do is take this line in the center and move it over maybe to about there. The ears, the ears will give away the angle of the head as far as the, uh, you know, how much of one side you're seeing than the other side. If you can see the ears over here and you can't see them over there, you know you're seeing a lot more of this side. Now, you almost think you're looking at a total straight view of them, but you're actually catching more of this side. So since we move that line over that way, I would take and probably add a little more cranium over here. It won't really matter because we're going to have to we're going to cover it all up with hair, but... Bob, I had to step yeah. away. Are you referencing a photo? Yeah, the man. What man? You didn't, you didn't get the photos? Or? No. It was an no. email on August 20th. Okay, I'll go check. Oh, no, I'll, I'll just email it to you really quick. I mean... Um, okay, thanks. Where is it? Here it is. I could just... Sims Lynn at Gmail, right? I think that's it. Yeah, that's the one I that's that's the one I sent it to. Sims Lynn at Gmail. Maybe did you get it? Did you get the right one or? I don't know. Is this a, a dark complected man or? Yeah. Oh, okay. I did get it then. Sorry. Okay. So that framework, we've got a lot going on and, and um, we haven't really even started yet. Okay, <clears throat> so we are getting, let's see, from there to there, there we go. That's about the bottom of the nose, about from the, remember the brow to the chin, the brow to the chin, bottom of the nose, there we go. <clears throat> And then from the nose to the bottom of the chin, 
approximately is where the bottom of the mouth will be. And then I just take that all the way up. As you can see, a little less nostril on the left side, a little bit more nostril on the right side. Little bit more over here. It's not much. But you know, if you want to know why people can draw these very accurate drawings that you know they they they, they consider all that stuff. Okay. And then let's go down to the mouth here and let's just draw in a diamond shape. I mean, I know his lips aren't a diamond shape, but I throw them in like a diamond shape anyway. You know, Rob, he always looks like he has a deviated septum. So it's almost like his nose, and, and George, you can correct me if I'm giving the wrong diagnosis, but it's almost like his nose is, like, twisted to the right. I mean, sorry, the left. You know what I mean? Yeah. Skewed a little bit. He's got a broken nose, yeah. Uh, twisted to his right. Yeah, it looks like a broken nose. Rob, do you call this a, a, a frontal view or a slight three-quarter view? And you know, you'll find that hardly anybody's a perfect frontal view. But yeah, it's it's yeah, it's about a uh, it, it, eight ninths, <laughs> nine tenths view. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're you're getting a little little more on this side. I mean, you know, I mean, I think his hair is covering up part of his ear because I think I do see a touch of ear on on this side, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But that's what we think about. I mean, you know, the, the, the more accurate you get with somebody's face, the more all these things you consider. And it's not always necessary to get so accurate, but. Right. But I mean, looking at his eyes, yeah. his eye on his right side, our left looks bigger than the other one. Yet, if it were a slight three quarter view, it would be the other, other way around. Anyway. Yeah, he's almost looking straight at us, and one eye is, yeah, the one on the left does look larger, and that's because it's more open. Yeah. I mean, a little bit more. It's weird. It's weird. Okay. Now, let, let's just throw in his, uh, I'm going to, it's tempting to want to throw in his uh, eye sockets, because he's got those really pointy eyebrows. I would just still let's keep it like a like a robot first, and they're almost the same. But you do get a little bit less on this side, a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit more. And as you can see, um, his cheekbone. I mean, this is really narrow in here, and then the cheekbone, and then so there's the side of the face that kind of goes in and out like that. Um, this side of the face just gets lost into ear and hair and cranium so uh yeah you are looking at if you look at the bottom of the nose it's a little bit higher i'm sorry the bottom of the ear is a little bit higher than the bottom of the nose and that's because he's slightly looking downward very slightly Which is one of the reasons you see the bottom of his eyes. See at the bottom of his iris? You can see the whole bottom of his iris. And that's number one, he's got big eyes. Number two, he's looking up at you. And you'll see, when you look up at somebody, you'll see the bottom of their iris oftentimes. All right. Now let's throw in those cheekbones. Remember those little dots I put in there just to tell myself? Now he's got really extremely wide cheekbones. So you're going to cut way off over here that way off over here and he is a very lean person which is means his cheekbones are all sunken in that's just from it's almost like he's missing upper teeth yeah, he could very well be. Yes, you're right. Yeah, that bottom lip is really sticking out there, isn't it? Like he's got an underbite, I'm sure. Probably because of the missing teeth, yeah. See, you start realizing all this stuff. 
Okay. Um, let's throw on the eyeballs. I'm just going to very lightly notice the eyeball because, you know, you lose a lot of that. So, and it's certainly no three quarter view, or you might even have part of this nose overlapping this eye. And you notice his eyes are pretty wide, pretty far apart. So if anything, and I might play to the inside of this eye and move it out that way, etc. Okay. Um, there's the bottom of the nose. And you know, his nose does skew over. I'm just going to lay it in pretty straight first. Like that first. So I, I'm just wanting to know there's a top to it, a side to it, and a bottom to it. <clears throat> at this point well, let's frame out about where the hair is now you might be really tempted to get into all of those little curls but I would sway you not to do that. Um, I, let's just think, for instance, how close do the, does the hair get to the eye over here? There's the eyeball. <clears throat> we know that the, probably the, the part that goes over the eyeball, you know, right in there, so maybe the hair starts about here. And I'll guess it comes all the way out to about there. We'll just frame that out. And here it starts overlapping the hair about the head about there. So I'm gonna say there's about that much forehead. And I just draw straight lines first. Some hair back here. I guess he's got those sideburns. And you know, you, you take your best guess. got these uh, sideburns that come way down here. Yeah, below the lips. So the side of his face is somewhere in there. <clears throat> Same with his uh, mustache. I just frame it out like that first. Just straight lines. Like that. Maybe it kind of comes in like a W, like, a, like an M, huh? M. Yeah. How about that? Looks to me like I need to, he does have a very big chin. So I think maybe I'll lower his chin a little bit. And a really round chin. He could be very tall. Does he? Does, you know that? Um, what's that when you're pituitary and you get really, really tall? That that it's not a disease, but I mean, like a condition where they get really tall. Acromegaly. Wow. He looks a little bit like that in his jaw, doesn't he? Yeah. Maybe. So I'm just gonna, so he, you know, you could be, he, he could be a very tall person. <clears throat> it 
So look at all this understructure. We haven't really put any character on him yet. But if, I'm telling you, if you do all this, and you've taken all this time to lay out all this understructure, when you start laying the characteristics on it, it's more better. I'm telling you. Let's start out. I'm going to start off with this very defining thing on him. And you might think, well, it's the eyes, right? Those eyebrows are very, very defining. If I were doing a caricature of this person, I would make a big deal about those eyebrows and they peek up like that. Like that. really peek out way out there. And remember, we're not, I mean, I'm not going to be shading with the pencil, so we'll do all our shading with the color. Um, so that's a big thing. Um, I'm going to go into his nose here, and I'm going to put in this little nostril we're, in other words, we're seeing a lot more of this one and a lot less of this one. Like that. And then the wings of the nostrils are quite wide. They really come way out here. Maybe even wider than that. There's not going to be any time for a crit, is there? This morning. We'll get as far as we can with this one. We'll get a lot farther with the other one. Because we won't have to go over all this. And then, if you look at the MMW on him, it's a really big M. Like, whoa way off over there and then look at the corners they really they really come they really pinch at the corners the middle lip and then if you notice on that inner slit on the in the middle it just kind of at the corners, it just really angles down at the corner. You can really see it on this one. It pinches and then just angles down like that. And he really doesn't have that W thing going on the bottom left, but. By the way, I want you just to understand the light is coming from this side, which means most of your shadows are off to this side, except he's got these hollowed out cheekbones where you're actually getting a sort of a half tone in here. They're really interesting. <clears throat> okay, now, best for last, let's get into those eyes. Um, yeah, they really pull down on the corner. See, they, they kind of pull down and then up and see the low is way out here. Rob, could you zoom in on the eyes while you, yeah, thank sure. you. Thank you. Great idea. Looks like I can make his chin a little bit longer, maybe. Oh, we'll see. <clears throat> yeah. So there's quite, quite a bit of pull right here on the corner. And then you have that thickness.
And on him, you have a second lid right in here. And you even get a third little uh, something happening in there. You get quite a bit of shadow in this little hollowed out area. Everybody has that. Over on the other side, too. Where they get a lot of shadow up in there. That's what really his defining thing. I look for those. Anytime I'm doing a portrait. So let's just draw the iris in there. Now, here's a little secret. When you draw on the iris, think about the white of the eye. How much of the white of the eye goes a little white? You know, people always draw the dark, I mean, the iris, but think about how much of the white of the eye you're seeing. And you, you'll get the size about right. I'm a little wide over here. So it almost touches the bottom, but not quite. He's under studio lighting, so he's got big giant highlights. You might want to just draw little circles around those. He doesn't have much much of a sleeve in here. Yes? What are these circles around the highlight? Why, why do you have little circles around the highlight? Well, I just want to know where the highlight is. So I put a, a little, I outline the highlight. That's okay. all. Yeah, they're just uh, outlines. Yeah. And then if you, if you still see some of your round ball you put in there earlier, you could just erase it out or something. <laughs> Whatever you like. Now let's get into this other eye here. There's that shape. So higher over here, lower out here. Um, there's a little bit of thickness to the skin here. And then it comes down and then you see that other little um, indentation. There's a little eyelid right there. I mean, the harder I hit that, the, the more old he'll look. <laughs> So let's see, um, he's got quite a bit of the white of the eye on the left side, not so much on the right side. More like that, and then lots of tear duct over here, pretty big tear ducts. And almost a lazy eye on the right side, a little bit, it almost looks like it's a little bit off. And again, I'm just going to outline those um, highlights. See, now I might get into more of a a little bit of outlining. You know, with hair, if you're off a little bit, as long as you have this framework, you know, it doesn't matter if you're off a little bit. <clears throat> but I see people painting hair strands and go look at a great, great portrait painter, any, any great portrait painter, you won't see that. All right. Now 
Uh, he looks pretty young right now because I haven't hit, hit any of those lines in his face. Probably what he looked like younger. This goes in for the fullness of the cheekbone and then out. I'm sorry, it goes. And then out. And then down. And you really get these big hollowed out cheekbones in there. The jaw starts way, way down there. And this cheekbone is really, look, look how far it is from the eye all the way around the cheekbone. It's pretty darn large cheekbone. So it could very well be Yeah, my ear needs to come out a little further. Okay. Now we got a couple of lines. And like I say, the more you hit these lines around the eyes, just notice them. The more you hit those lines around the eyes, the older. Or, or tired, you know. Got quite a bit, quite a dark little line through here too. Remember, I said some people, the eyebrows actually overlap, and you get a line here. I, I've seen people with it way deeper than this, but he's got a little bit of that. All right. You certainly could throw a little bit of whatever you want around the outside of these. We're ready to paint. All right. Let me let me blow this out. Can we go back to your your drawing just a second, Rob? Thanks. It's coming out warm today. Huh. Let's see if I do it like this. Huh. Okay. <sighs> okay, so what I was going to say is uh, what the. Where is my brush? Let's take just have these brushes. you might want to do is just go for a background color first and I'm thinking of you know a blue gray so I'm just gonna take any blue really but I'm gonna hold use ultramarine ultramarine and orange orange will gray it might be the funnest part. Yeah. So it's red, yellow, and blue, right? You know, for his hair, I might use the side of your brush. And see, that gives you a nice little dry brush edge. Oops, I got a little little drip marks. Those are fine. Can you see how the drawing is really the the key? No. No, it's fun time. throw a little magenta in that because, you know, I want it to look like I was having fun. 
because I am having fun. Plus, I like to do the background first because it kind of loosens me up. Now, this, this side over here is much more saturated. This side's less saturated. <clears throat> Sometimes I think that can be interesting. Uh, I'm going to use this dry brush edge. I'm just trying to spread the uh, bristles. That's what they're called, bristles. Just give myself a nice little, see there's a, I'm not gonna bother trying to make every little indentation of the person's hair. shirt on. You can make it any color you want. It's your, your painting. You know what's fun too is to mix mix on the uh, surface. There's a little Prussian right there. Maybe a little magenta in there. Because it's a pretty dark shirt. Although the darkest dark would be way back here. I just hit it like this in the beginning. I want it to be a little different than the background, so I'm going to hit a little bit of something warm on the edge there. I threw a little magenta in there for that. Maybe a little cad in there. Boom, boom, boom. Look how fun that is. Woo. Now he's got some really amazing hair. Uh, now, you know, it's kind of a gray, I would say a warm gray. Do you have to paint? And you know what you could do is just make yourself up a gray. I've got uh, like a blue gray growing here. And add a little red to it, maybe a little yellow to it. That'll give me a warm gray. So I used uh, red, yellow, and blue. It's hard. This this uh, this new palette here is kind of beads up on there. Don't do that after a while. Let's see what that looks like. I mean, I, I see a lot more green in there than that. Wow. But on the other hand, uh, I would just go with what you like. And I'm just going to throw that in there. There's really, I mean, there's more in shadow on this side, but it's really... Not got a whole lot of light and shadow. What I can do is, on some of these really light areas, I can just pull them out with my rag. Is that a, a good way to do the hair to dry brush? Yeah, I usually do that, yeah. And then, there we go. Some, um, some darks in there.
Just gonna hit a couple back there just just to get started off. We'll hit some more later. But if you notice, I got my big masses already covered. And we haven't really started on them yet. That's usually the way I like to do it. Now his hair down here is very, very light. And around here, very light. Okay, good enough for now. Um, here's what you might want to do here is um, lightly draw lightly draw around where the highlights are. He's got lots of big highlights. He's got kind of lavenderish highlights up here. So if you draw around them, you'll know to kind of avoid that area. It can help you. Now the highlight is everything on his nose. So just notice how it bends back this way and then it comes back over this way, rounds off on the tip. But he's got quite a bend there. And then I've got those straight lines on those guidelines on there. I can just probably erase those out. They're good for placement and I've got a big dot right there. Oh well. Alright, so he's got a yeah. Squirrely highlight over there, and then highlight on the top of the cheeks. And not so much highlight on this side, a little bit, but not much. Highlight on the lip, of course. See how the bottom lip catches all that light? Where the top lip rounds off into, uh, on the top, it'll catch more light. So it'll lighten up that line. I have a really dark line on mine. Okay, and then let's mix up the local color. So see the shadow color, kind of a dark brown, and then see how the highlight, see how that's kind of a lavenderish color. Um, I'm looking for the color, if you look at his nose, right beside the highlight. I see it everywhere. Also, if you look at the forehead, it's a little darker on the forehead because his forehead probably catches more light and gets tanner. But the local color is right here, not in the highlight and not in the shadow. We want we want to make up that local color. And I would just use red, yellow, and blue. I'm using there's cad yellow, cad red, which is too orange. So I'm gonna throw a little ultramarine blue in there. Give it a test. Oh, I see that everywhere. Oh, wow. Not a bad guess. Don't always get that lucky on the first try. So he's got quite a bit of orange in his skin, right? And what I do is I just avoid those areas, those um, highlight areas. And I just paint this local color over his whole face. Little highlight in here. I didn't see that. I had a little bit more water to that. Right over everything. Don't worry, you'll see it. You'll see your lines. Get a little bit of highlight in here, so I'm gonna, I forgot about that one. I hit that with my, uh, there. Hit that with the rag, a little harder right here on the top. There we go. Just paint right over the shadows. Lip 
lips are a little bit different color, but lips look a little bit more purple. But I'll just go over them anyway. avoiding the highlights. <clears throat> uh, what colors did you use again to get that? Cad red, cad yellow, and ultramarine blue. So basically it's orange, and then I add a little blue to it. And that gray, that gray is it, so it's not so crazy orange. And he has a little bit of highlight on the top of his chin, too. So see, with, uh, with darker skinned people, you'll just have a deeper local color, but the highlights will usually show more because of their dark skin, the highlights pop more. And then a very light color for the highlights, kind of like a blue violet. So I'm, I'm using um, ultramarine blue and magenta. Let me give that a test here. Very light. I think it's very bright on the nose. So I'm going to pick that up a little bit. Maybe even a little bit brighter up here. aren't white I mean like if you look at the highlights on his um, beard or his right here look how light that is no highlight on his face is actually that light okay yeah but even if you compare it to the if you have a white on your screen or something like that it, it's not white right it'll fool you though and yeah. sometimes sometimes the camera will actually read it as much brighter than it actually is that's Weird. Even these are, even these uh, sideburns are really, especially in shadow, that won't be light. I don't know, like that. Now, Robert, um, you're doing a class now and it's a demo and you're limited <laughs> with your time. Yeah. But if you had to do a portrait, like yeah. someone commissioned you, would you go layer by layer? Like, I'm tempted to start the first layer and wait until it dries and then add to it and add to it, But which you don't have the time to do. But I'm curious, normally, if you had a commission to do a portrait, would you go layer by layer as opposed to the way you're going now? Uh, pretty much go like I do now. Uh, I'm going a little faster though, but yeah, you'll lose a lot of the spontaneous marks of you if you go if you go uh, too layered. 
you'll, you'll get something that looks like a photograph. And you know, a lot of times in portraits, you know, people, that's what they want. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But you'd be surprised. I can, I can just keep refining this and refining this and refining this. It's really dark in here. Let's, let's get into those eyes. Here's one thing about the eyes. You get a dark shadow right across the top here. Let's do it on the other side too. He's got even another small little other lid right there. Comes off the side. Got like a second lid right there. Just a little slip. Oops. Just a little something in there. Okay. And he's got quite a pull. Pull downward at the uh, corners. Oh, and this one comes up over here. Something like that. And I would use a very dark brown for his eyes, iris. And there's a pupil in there, so. I'm just painting around the highlights. Oftentimes you get something warm and that happens. Yeah. Here's another thing to note is that the ball of the eye, remember it's a ball and it goes into shadow. So all of this is in shadow right here. It's just, it's white. So it's a very light shadow. And all this over here, it's not, it's not as light as a highlight, as you can see. But it is lighter than this side, so I'm gonna just put a little something on there. I might have to even knock that back again. Same thing with this one. This one gets dark over here because it's, it's on a ball. And it's hard because, especially when you're doing it from a photograph, it's, it's flat. The photograph is flat. So you might think you're working on something that's flat. But even if you look at the white of the eye over on this side, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a highlight even on the white of the eye. See it? That shows you how dark the white of the eye is. It's pretty dark. So. Black can register in your brain as black, so you make it black, and, it, and you're going, wait a second, that's not black. Because the black that's in the light, just look at his shirt, his shirt is black, but if you see the little shadows in his shirt behind him, behind his neck, they're much darker than the shirt itself. So blacks in the light are much lighter than you might think. Same with uh, white so the whites of his eyes might be much darker than you think dark 
in here. Corners of the mouth. I'm just hitting the areas that don't receive a lot of light. He's got these amazing shadows that I might do in a violet color uh, right up in here. Come on, Violet. how defining that is it's just it, it just that's his that's you can see it right away kind of makes him some shadow he's got pretty violet shadows and they're pretty dark now we do have a shadow going right on the side of the nose here and right on the bottom of the nose like this just kind of and I'll just so it casts a shadow the nose casts a shadow goes off into light comes back into shadow Interesting. So I'm Just build in those lights, get a little bit of a shadow underneath here, a little bit of a shadow under there, and then this cast a shadow, and all this is in shadow. Edges, we can just soften those. Come in with that that same skin tone I used there, this one right here, and I'm thinned it out. And I can use that on the edges here, like this. Just and oftentimes that color gets really quite saturated. See, if you'll notice, that's the most saturated color on his face quite yellowy orange, especially on his nose, kind of yellow. quite a good shadow in here I just put it in like that maybe come in with a wet brush and just soften some edges yeah, I would have done more softening edges if I were doing a commission thing it depends on the person too some people like you know 
they, they want they don't mind it looking a little bit rougher do your watercolor style Rob just let it rip you know and then other people are like I want it to look exact well actually what I looked like um, many years ago or what I think I used to look like anyway <laughs> uh, let's see and I'm going to uh, so just put a little that's a little bright over there and a little bit cooler Brighten that down. Some darks in the hair. the things that'll make them look older or as if you know when I hit these lines just hit them a little bit like that got another one in there kind of like that and these are quite a bit darker huh uh, it's even got one that kind of these lines too, you want to hit these nice and dark. Watercolors are a little dry lighter on you. See how bluish they are compared to the orangey of his skin? That's probably just because they're using a cool light on him. And I gotta give you enough time to download this thing. I hate to leave it here. You know, it's just how these lessons go. I can never, I really wanna finish it, but oh well. See, I just hit those lines under his eyes and it aged him a little bit. They're not lines, they're shadows. Uh, Robert? Yeah? Yeah, uh, can you say again what you did over the highlights? In other words, it's a, a sort of a glaze or? Yeah, I did a glaze of a lavender color. Uh-huh, very pale, right? Yeah, well, it, it's, you know, and if you compare it to a white, like, look how bright that, it's pretty dull. So it, it's, it's weird. And it might be darker than you think. It really hit those darks, and his face, they really get deep in here. Wow. And under here. Pretty 
dark in the nostrils. Dark back there. Okay, you guys, I'm sorry. Wish we could have got more done on this. But who knows, maybe we can work on it in the next round. We'll see. Because I need enough time to download this. So I, I, I can... Uh, so I can get it to you, you can download it, and then we get get off to the next one. And we'll try to do that. I can I can also, you know, if you don't download it in time or something like that, I, I can also um, put it back up there. So, oh boy. Oh, so much more I want to do. Break until 1 o'clock. Yeah, let's break until 1. I'll, um... I'll um I'll get you this recording as soon as I get it, okay? Okay. Thanks. All right, everybody. Let's just just basically we're just going to do another class. So I'm going to close this down. Hopefully, Zoom will get this back to me by twelve, okay. and um, we can get to it. Okay, dokie. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Rob. Sure. I'll see you at one. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.
break now. I'll see you later after one hour. Let's do class resume.